What's up everyone, Dr. Jacob Wilson here, the Muscle PhD, and today we're actually gonna answer a very interesting, often controversial question, which is, if it fits your macros, are macros all that matters, right? So, um, again, everyone's heard of IFYM, if it fits your macros, uh, we know what macronutrients are. I'm gonna give you a quick refresher on them. Um, macronutrients are essentially the three main um, energy sources or food sources that we take into our body, right? Those are proteins, everyone, your bodybuilder, physique athlete, figure competitor, you know what protein is. Um, carbohydrates, right? And then of course we have fats. So the concept, the original concepts of if it fits your macros is the only thing you really have to concentrate on are meeting certain macronutrient needs. But in essence, within a diet, all macronutrients are the same. And that is irrespective of the timing of those macronutrients um, and the type of macronutrient that you're taking in, right? Uh, so those are the two things I wanna address. And at the end, I'm gonna let you guys make a conclusion um, and I'll tell you what mine is as well. So <clears throat> let's think about this for a second, okay? Number one, again, the concept says the timing does not matter and where those macronutrients come from doesn't matter so long as you fit your macros, okay? So let's think about that for a second. And actually, it's interesting because a lot of the people on the movement, you'll see individuals um, eating, you know, cocoa puffs, cream puffs, um, Ho-Ho's, you know what I mean? Twinkies, um, pizza, all this stuff, as long as it fits their macros, it really doesn't matter, okay? Um, or maybe it's like they'll save all their calories up for ice cream and candy, something like that. Um, and the other thing part about it is um, they may be at the end of the day and go, oh, I got 50 carbohydrates left. Well, damn, I'm just gonna have Lucky Charms, right? Is that okay? Does it matter? You know what I mean? Um, let's get into each of those. So first let's talk about, I'm gonna talk about each of the macronutrients, okay? And we're gonna discuss, uh, is there equality across them? So let's start off with protein because that's everyone's favorite topic, okay? And let's just look and go, if it fits your macros is true, it doesn't matter what protein source you get because it's gonna affect your body the same. Is that true? Well, first off, let's look at um, uh, protein quality, for example. If you take whey protein and maybe take consume 15 grams of whey protein in a protein that's in a protein bar, or you have the same 15 grams of protein, but that protein is essentially from something like um, a vegetable base or a vegan source protein, like wheat protein or rice protein, that protein bar that has whey will increase protein synthesis and actually might even come close to maximizing it. Whereas the protein that's from the vegan based source actually might not even increase protein synthesis at all. Because the protein bar might have some fat in it, might have some fiber, it'll slow down the actual response of the protein. And the quality of vegan based protein, which is an incomplete protein source and has very low leucine, might not even increase protein synthesis at all. Well, you had the same amount of macros but bottom line is that one built muscle, probably stimulated uh, mitochondria to increase, probably increased fat burning, the other didn't at all, okay? And in fact, my brother in his dissertation did research where he found that like, if you look at the vegan-based sources versus the whey-based sources, you actually see that you get leaner and you gain more muscle with the whey, but you get fatter um, and you gain less muscle with the wheat. Same total amount of macros, right? Same same uh, total amount of protein. So that's not even, that's definitely not true, okay? Um, and we can go on and on and on against the digestion rate of protein. You know, like for example, if you take two high quality proteins, whey and casein, just because whey digests faster, you actually get a more anabolic response than casein, okay? So do you see my point? The point is even the digestion rate affects things. So clearly a macro is not a macro of protein. But let's move forward and let's talk about carbohydrates, for example, okay? Carbohydrates, if I were to go before bed and go, oh, I got 50 carbohydrates left and I'm just gonna eat um, uh, Pop-Tarts, okay? Something that's very high glycemic. Studies actually show that like, um, basically when I have a high glycemic carbohydrate before bed, in the morning, 
I'm a little bit insulin resistant. And my response to carbohydrates yields a higher insulin response in the morning than if I were to have something lower glycemic at night. Remember, glycemic index is essentially how rapidly the carbohydrate digests. Another thing is, when we look at, everyone always goes, well, you know what, so long as you sustain the same amount of macros, you'll lose the same amount of weight, X, Y, Z. The other thing to think about is people are not robots, right? When you look at something like satiety, how full I am, if I'm not thinking about food, my probability of cheating is much lower. So what's gonna make me more satiated? If I just drink a um, high sugar soda, right? Or if I were to eat um, a bowl of broccoli with chicken, right? You know what I mean? So as opposed to just a shake and um, the high sugar drink. Well, clearly I'm gonna have much more satiety and be able to handle my diet much better if I had the low glycemic index food. What about fiber intake, right? Again, if I had the high sugar cereal, very low fiber content, okay? High, high increase in, um, uh, in blood sugar, whereas if I had the broccoli, right, that's gonna be a low glycemic index. It has lots of fiber, and there's studies showing that my gut microbiome, meaning the bacteria in my stomach, which affect my satiation, which affect my overall leanness, which affect my insulin sensitivity, okay? I will have a healthier gut if I have the lower glycemic, higher fiber foods than if I were to have the higher glycemic index, high sugar foods. Even having the same amount of macros completely affects your body differently, okay? And then basically we need to look at fats, right? If you look at fats, for example, where you have saturated fats, you have unsaturated fats, and even within the unsaturated fats, you have monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats, right? Well, if you were to look, for example, at different fat makeups, studies show that one of the number one fats that can increase testosterone levels is saturated fat. Monounsaturated fat also increases um, testosterone levels and hormone levels. Polyunsaturated fats have very little impact on hormones. They don't increase things like testosterone that much. So for example, let's say that I'm like uh, having a diet and I'm avoiding a lot of saturated fats, my hormone levels won't be as high. Whereas if I have a diet that's really high in polys, I might have hormone levels that aren't as high if my saturated are low at the same time. Even going within the polyunsaturated fatty acids, we have things that like omega-3 fatty acids that are really high in fish, um, high in flax, um, you know what I mean? Or we have things like omega-6 fatty acids, okay? Um, they're higher in things like uh, um, canola oil or, or things of that nature. But the point is, or safflower oil. Um, the thing is that like uh, omega-6 is, typically we can get it from our diet easily, right? But if I were to actually supplement with omega-6s or increase my omega-6s, they're actually pro-inflammatory. Whereas omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So if I eat a lot of fish in my diet, or if I supplement with um, the omega-3 fatty acids, these special kind of what we call essential fatty acids, studies show mitochondria is actually higher. Studies show that um, I'm leaner, okay? So I think that's really important. <clears throat> Take even the chain length of a fat. We're, I was just talking to Charlie earlier um, before this video, and he made a really good point. If I literally just substitute some of my fats for medium chain triglycerides, these shorter chain fats, just that increases my metabolism, cause me to burn more fat, okay? So same macronutrients. Only thing you did was replace the actual type of fat that you consumed, okay? And then the other thing is, if, if it fits your macros, doesn't even take into account timing. Paul Cribb did a great study where basically they took individuals and they essentially took the same amount of protein intake, protein and creatine, okay? They gave it to them around their workout or they gave it to them morning and night. And when you gave it to them around the workout, the bodybuilders were leaner, stronger, okay? And gained more muscle than the, the bodybuilders who didn't time it around their workouts. So that's a timing issue, okay? So I think it's very, very important. And now, now research from Molly Bray is actually showing that if you actually shift your macros throughout the day where you start off with a lower carb breakfast, okay, and then um, um, introduce carbs later in the day, that you actually program your metabolism to burn more fat the rest of the day. So the main point I want to you to take home here is that it's not just as simple as, well, 
all I gotta do is pull up my fitness app and, and just track my macronutrients, and that's all that matters. Because clearly it's not. And you know, a lot of people are like, well, you know what? That's just sweating the details. In bodybuilding, the number one thing that matters really, it is the details in bodybuilding. Because every move you make really impacts your physique a lot. So, you know, choose, making healthier choices, timing things correctly, it does make a difference. And so it's not as simple as if it fits your macros. So guys, thank you so much. I'll see you next time.